Hey everyone, this is Stephen Chidwick recording my first video for Run It Once. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I play online as Stevie444 and I've been playing poker for about eight years now since I was 16. I started out with just free rolls and uh, built my bankroll to the point where by the time I turned 18, I was making more money than I could in any other job at that time. So I kind of st stuck with it and uh, been doing it ever since. Uh, my bread and butter has been uh, multi-table tournaments, both live and online, and sit and goes. Although uh, I really enjoy the, the mixed games. I've spent a lot of effort over the last few years getting good at, at non-no limit hold'em games. In this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, live poker, my insights on it, and then the second half of the video, I'm going to break down the three most interesting hands that I played last week uh, when I was in Barcelona for the EPT. First off, why play live poker? Well, I was just in Barcelona, as I said, for the EPT, and I was just astounded. Every single tournament I played was very soft, very big. The 1K Euro uh, Astraeus main event was the largest tournament that PokerStars has ever run. You got 1,800 people or something absurd. The main got 1,300 people. The 10K high roller got 180 entrants or something like that. And so while online poker is getting much tougher and kind of smaller fields and more reg build, Live poker is, is definitely surging, especially if you're willing to travel and uh, play these soft tournaments with, with lots of satellite qualifiers all over the world. Uh, you can really find some good spots. And even if you don't want to travel too much, you can't be sitting there saying, all right, I'm Joe Bloggs, I play 2-4, no limit hold and 6 max, I play on poker stars, and that's what I do every day. Uh, if you want to maximize your expectation and your your hourly rate, you really have to be looking outside of the games maybe you usually grind for other high equity spots. And live poker is really, uh, really a great way to travel around, see new places, meet new people, and uh, still make money in the process. Variety, keep things fresh, uh, keep you interested in the game by, by not just grinding the same thing day in, day out. And I think it's a great learning tool also. Um, you're forced to sit there and play one table. So you can really think very, very in-depth about each situation, uh, find new lines that maybe you can uh, employ into your mass tabling style, if that's, if that's how you play. And yeah, just, just get real creative and think about, think about poker from a different perspective. As far as my live poker history, you can see I really wasn't winning too much in the first few years. 2010 is the first year I was eligible to play the World Series and didn't do too well. You can see I cashed for 43,000, but I was, I was in for much more than that uh, buy-ins wise, uh, playing, playing pretty much every tournament. And then as I got more comfortable live and started to figure it out a little more, my results steadily picked up. In the last couple of years, uh, I've been pretty successful. Uh, this year, I cashed more times at the World Series than, than anyone else with nine caches. And uh, yeah, I feel a lot more comfortable now live. And hopefully I can help you if you're thinking about playing live for the first time or if you've been playing for a while and you're looking to take your game to the next level. Uh, hopefully you can learn from, from my experiences a little bit. The first one I played uh, in the main event early on. We started with 30,000 and I was down to 25-ish. Under the Gun Plus One is a young, uh, young play European player who I don't recognize. Makes a somewhat big open to uh, 525 and gets a call from Undergun Plus 2, who was a 
kind of a middle-aged uh, Spanish-looking guy. I peeled Big Lion with 12-5 clubs. And it comes 9th Reduce Rainbow. I check, and this player C-bets uh, more than the size of the pot. He makes it 2,000. And I noticed that he didn't have uh, any, of, or if he, he had any, he didn't have very many, or I couldn't see them, of the uh, 125 chips. He'd, been, he'd played a couple of pots and, and lost those, those smaller denomination chips already. And so by tossing out 2,000, this is kind of a tell that he didn't want to, to verbalize a number, which is often, often uh, represents weakness. Uh, players are bluffing, they don't want to, they don't want to talk and maybe uh, give something away in their voice. So they're more likely to just grab chips and throw them out there. Um, I thought that the likelihood of him having a set was very low, given this bet sizing. But I thought that uh, he could potentially do this with, with overpairs. And that made up most of his value range. Underground plus two folds. And I call. Turn is a ten. And I checked to him, he bets 5,000 into 5,600. And again, now he has, he has not very many physical chips, and he just throws out the 5,000 chip. Uh, now I thought that, I thought that he definitely could have overpair still. I don't think I can call in this, but he's going to check back a lot. He's going to check back an ace a lot when he has jack for kings. I'm not getting very good odds when he makes this, this huge bet sizing. And I'm out of position. So I think that my options here are between, between shoving and, and just folding. Now usually online, I would, I would look at this bet sizing and kind of weight him more towards strong hands, towards overpairs. But... As I said, live with this with this read that he uh, he was just throwing out chips uh, because he didn't want to want to verbalize his uh, his bet size. I thought that he was much more weighted towards or weighted away from from big hands, and I thought that he also could very well bet fold a pair of jacks or queens a good bit, given that. There's, there's very few draws that I can have. Uh, I can have, you know, ace four, ace five of hearts, although I probably wouldn't even peel those to his bet size in the flop. And there were no flush draws in the flop, obviously, so I think that my range looks very strong. I can, I can represent sets very well. And, you know, this player... It's it's seventy five one fifty in EBT Barcelona main event. I think if he has an overpay, he's he's gonna be. He's gonna have to think pretty hard about whether he wants to to stack up with it. So, doing the math on this hand, uh, how often I need to get him to fold uh, for a shot to be profitable here. Uh, this is the equation you come up with. X is, is when I want to find out his folding frequency, his break-even folding frequency. Uh, so 33 is the amount I would have if he were to fold. 1 minus X is uh, his calling frequency. And this is the equ my equity in the pot if he calls. It's gonna, there's going to be 51,000 in the pot. I'm going to have about 17% equity against his range. I'm going to have obviously 8 outs to a straight. Which, which is going to be good, uh, pretty much regardless if he has an open pair or, or a set, uh, which he could have, but again, I think, I think that's pretty unlikely given his bet sizing. Oh, and I should say, uh, on the other side of the equation, uh, because I want to find the, the break-even point, this is the stack I would have if I fold, uh, 22,000. Um, so, for us to be indifferent about shoving, 
his folding frequency needs to be such that this side of the equation uh, has the same equity as, as 22,000. Uh, so simplifying it down, he needs to be folding 55% of the time uh, for it to be profitable. And I thought that he had enough bluffs and enough likelihood of folding an overpair to my shove that it was going to be profitable for me to, to rip it in here, uh, which is what I did. And he did fold.